um, so it was a great start in terms of you know the challenges that we have at, at construction job sites when we build these highly complex uh, you know infrastructure systems. So what I want to talk about is the challenges that I see in terms of achieving situation awareness at uh, at our job sites during construction and and infrastructure management. And in, at this day and age, you know, with the click of a button, we all know what's going on with our friends all around the world. And it's kind of baffling to me that, you know, why can't we achieve similar or even better situation awareness at job sites when we manage these highly complex projects? Um, so sometimes uh, seemingly easy questions become very challenging for us to answer when we have complex projects. For example, are there any deviations at my job site? Very simple, if we have the information, but if we don't have the information, it becomes challenging and then we end up losing a lot of money and time fixing defects afterwards. This is actually a case study that we see, we did um, the, the picture that you see, and the red part is basically deviations that we observed by collecting point cloud data and mapping that with the BIM. This was an early study about 10 years ago, but what is baffling to me here is that not only, as you can see, there's a red of a column and a beam, so not only there was an error, but we, since we missed that error, we kept on building until it was too late. And that's the challenge, right? So we want to have situation awareness so we can eliminate all these issues. Similarly, another simple question that I thought was like, where is the valve to shut off my water when my water is leaking? Turns out to be pretty challenging if you don't know where things are in your facilities. And this turns out to be this, the NIST study that says, you know, for the facility operations alone, we're wasting lots of money because we don't have information. Um, Fernanda actually did research on this topic many years ago, and, and we observed that this is a normal you know, operation situation, and when you have an emergency, a water leaking, and, you, and, and if that person is not there, we're wasting a lot more money. For example, on our campus, we wasted in one event $500,000 because we didn't know where the valve is, and we couldn't shut it down immediately. Um, or during our facility operations, what do I need for this work order becomes challenging. And in fact, all, all our work orders, uh, we, uh, we followed our uh, field workers for facility operations. And they're basically wasting on the average 30 minutes to two hours finding information to be able to attack a work order. So again, these all are information problems that, you know, at this day and age, we should not have, right? So we should be able to have full situation awareness so that we can make effective decisions. Um, we all heard BIM is great, right? So we have many tracks here that we say, you know, we use BIM for simulation, energy simulations, clash detection, 4D, and many, many others that we have seen, even in this conference. Uh, what is the limitation of BIM? So BIM is virtual, what is missing? Reality. <laughs> so, so what is missing in BIM is reality. And when we think about reality, what are the things that we're thinking? <coughs> sensors, right? Anything that's right? So one of the group of sensors that bring reality to our world is this 3D imaging sensing, right? So we have handheld scanners, we have terrestrial scanning that we can collect lots of data. We have mobile ground scanning that we can collect data of uh, large roadway systems. We have scanning with drones these days that we can collect data on bridges and we have airborne radar. So with these systems, this is just only one group of technology, it's not a, you know, all spectrum, but we can see that as we go from top right corner to the bottom left, we have an increased spatial coverage and efficiency in data collection, and uh, when we go from the bottom left to the bottom right to the top left, we see much more precision in our data collection. So this provides an opportunity for us to explore, you know, many, much dense data collection so that we can have better situation awareness. But what is missing in, in, the re, in, this, in this world, in reality? Lots of data, what are we missing? 
So do we know, you know, the data just tells us what's going on right now, but if we don't have a good understanding of what we expect to see, which is the virtual world, then it becomes, you know, challenging to understand how or making the most out of the use of this data. So the opportunity that we have right now with all these technologies to integrate BIM and the sensor data so that the BIM provides the context to the data that we collect at the job site and then the data from the 3D imaging sensing provides reality to the building information models. So we started this research with that vision about a, more than a decade ago, about 15 years ago. And we were fascinated by the terrestrial scanning and the capabilities that it provides because the promise there is, you know, I can set this up 100 megabytes of data with millimeter level accuracy in the point. And uh, when I started, I said, this is great. We solved the whole world's problem. But then, <laughs> you know, millimeter accuracy, but here the point, the problem was that the accuracy is at the point level. And as engineers, we really don't care about the points. The stuff that we care are the features, right? How flat is my surface? Like this. So Bombardier came to us and said, you know, we're building these, you know, guideway systems and we need, you know, one eighth of an inch accuracy on the surface flatness, you know, can the laser scanners do it? So we did a bunch of experiments to see whether we can actually detect these bonds to the promise, with the promise that, you know, if we have a point level accuracy that is millimeter level, can we do that? And it turns out that it's not that easy. It's not that straightforward. So, you know, translating the point accuracy to the things that we, uh, we care about requires a lot of research and experiments. Um, and then there was also the question that came this time from GSA, said, you know, we do laser scanning uh, for our building information models, but we are not sure how good is the data. So we created an environment where we map, use this uh, mapping of the model and the laser scan data as a way to understand, you know, whether we can identify patterns of issues. It turns out that by looking at the patterns of deviations, one can actually detect whether the quality of the data is good or not. So for example, in this case, you see this concentric circles of things getting worse, you know, purple and you know, blue, et cetera. That typically suggests a sensor calibration error that was not caught during the data collection in this particular building. So again, if we go with this vision of sensors are great and we're getting millimeter level accuracy, Without really understanding and doing some quality control, we won't be able to, you know, we might have a completely false understanding of how we can utilize this data. And then, uh, you know, points are great, lots of dense points, but at the end of the day, we're interested in objects. So there are also a lot of algorithms that need to be developed to turn these point cloud data to objects of interest to us as engineers, right? So we need to know that there, there are walls here, etc., so that we can say, you know, con continuously control our, uh, our construction, support virtual bridge inspection that we can, uh, you know, then use the data to the maximum, you know, send a bunch of uh, workflows in terms of how you do the clearance detection and, and just run it through for the whole bridge so you have a much better much accurate uh, understanding of, of, of the clearance of a bridge, or you can use it throughout the life cycle of the construction uh, so that at the end of construction you can have an updated as built building information model. So these are the types of research that we worked on over the years to streamline the utilization of laser scanning for construction and infrastructure. And recently, you know, the, the previous case was a perfect example. Um, we came about with, uh, with a challenge that was posed to us with, the, with PANDOT and Mass, Mass, uh, Massachusetts DOT saying that we have these large infrastructure systems, large bridges, right? So we have seen, we, we just saw the example of a 14 kilometer bridge. Well, laser scanner might not really work very well in that environment. So we need to find another way to collect data to get a situation awareness for, this, for these type of things. So with that, we launched uh, two years ago research on 
using aerial inspection robots for civil engineering, and it's a joint project with the Robotics Institute and us. Um, so why did we again end up with drones? Uh, because when you look at bridge inspection, uh, there are challenges with the access to where you want to see things. And, and then you need to record things, and it's all manual, and, and, you, uh, and it's subjective. Um, you do visual inspection, so it kind of fits well, very, very well with the 3D imaging. And you want to make this whole assessment in a much more objective way. So among all the tool sets that we have in terms of 3D imaging, you know, we see that uh, these drone-based laser scanning provides larger uh, area coverage, but also because we can move the drone in and out of, a, of, an, uh, of the you know, different parts of the bridge, if, when you have a complex system like a bridge, it's, it's much more appropriate to use the drone rather than trying to move the terrestrial scanner from one location to the other. So with that goal, uh, so we had these three major uh, goals or tasks associated with this project. So we want to use this drone as a robotic inspection assistant to the inspector. There's no way to replace inspectors, but this is, provides a way for them to collect much more data and answer data about the environment. Again, we need to turn this point clouds into uh, objects of interest and, and uh, come up with you know, components that we see in the bridge. And then we need to, now we have this rich, you know, dense data and rich information we need to find better ways to, to support the decision making, you know, come up with environments to support immersive inspection and assessment of, of these inspectors. Here is what our particular drone looks like. Uh, we have a 3D LiDAR uh, on top of it and a computer. Uh, we have a camera at the back of it, at a GPS and, and IMU. It's about a meter in diameter, so it's not huge. Uh, we still have issues uh, with the flight time because these, uh, the payload is too, too much. It, only, it can only fly 15 minutes at a time. And, um, and I'll show you how it works. So here's an example of a bridge that we have. Oops. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so the, the idea here is that you, from the Google Earth, you pick the bridge that you want to inspect and you put a bounding box around the bridge. And uh, that will tell the drone where to focus on. And then you send the drone out, and it automatically discovers what to collect, where to go, and how to collect data. This is the real-time data collection. And what you're seeing here is the drone is uh, assessing where it is and how much coverage it had with respect to the bridge. So you want to have a complete coverage with the level of accuracy and detail that you're looking for as you send this out. So, um, so they, those voxels basically tell that it covered that space so that you want to cover the whole bounding box. Um, this is completely autonomous, so it makes decision. And when there are issues with GPS, it also realigns itself. And this is the real time uh, point cloud data collection that you see uh, as, it, as it builds. Um, oops. Oh, okay. So as I said, the, the data is still point cloud, so there are a lot of challenges associated with it. In fact, the point cloud data is much <laughs> worse than the terrestrial laser scanning data, much noisier, so it has lots and lots of issues associated with it. And in this case, we're also trying to identify thin objects in the scene, which makes it even more challenging. Um, so we have developed some algorithms that looks at and identify these thin objects, which are, you know, our girders and beams. And we apply the domain knowledge uh, to, to try to classify the objects that we have identified and create a solid model associated with it. So it will be a, a full, you know, close to a bridge information model. And once you have that, um, you can have, um, a quick, uh, you can have a, a, an environment where a bridge information model is linked to all sorts of different data that is collected at the job site or the design drawings that were embedded. 
and, and or previous reports that are associated with this bridge. And with that integrated environment, we're trying to explore how well the inspectors are making decisions. Does, it, does this environment even help them, you know, in what ways? And whether this is the right environment or whether we should have an immersive environment where we put them in a you know, in an environment where they can actually walk under the bridge or, or having this desktop version with many things linked to an integrated model would be a better way to do it. So here's an example of, you know, you can click on a girder and then it will retrieve the objects, the pictures that, uh, that the drone took uh, associated with that girder. Uh, or you can rate see the previous ratings of bridge components and based on that you can focus on a specific component and see why that component was assessed, you know, condition one or condition two or condition three. So you can see the data that's collected and, and how it ties to that specific component. Um, again, this is just a prototype. We're exploring, you know, what are some, you know, what are some ways to see to streamline the decision making and whether such an environment would help along the way. Um, so in conclusion, um, as I said, there is no excuse at this point that we cannot have full complete situation awareness on, <coughs> on our job sites and our, and our also infrastructure operation and management. The technology is there, we need to, we have been working on it, right? We all have been doing that and we can integrate this to to bring the virtual analysis capability with the reality that is collected through 3D imaging technologies. Many research issues exist. I wish, you know, uh, we have this technology, developers provide us specs that are useful for us. You know, not the point level accuracy, but maybe feature level accuracies. Or, or we can have better automated data processing approaches so we can turn these points into useful information for us and as well as advanced visualization as, and assessment. But uh, having said that, you know, the opportunities are compelling. You know, the, the, I see this as a never ending you know, quest, but uh, it's a quest that we have to do at this point. Um, so I wanna finish with acknowledgements to, uh, to the research team of the ARIA project as, as well as my research team and the sponsors of this project. Thank you.